Well, Windows 10 is nearing its final state of completion, so it's time to give a verdict on what Windows 10 is like to live with every day. Windows 8 was not a huge success. With its annoying Metro interface that included irritating full-screen apps and infuriating split-screen multitasking, it was annoying enough that many Windows users decided to just stick with Windows 7. The first thing we notice when starting up Windows 10 is the familiar modernized Windows logo and our slide-away lock screen revealing an excellently executed minimalistic login screen with only a profile picture and text bar for entering password. Windows 10, like Windows 8, can be paired to your Windows account, if you have one, to uh, simplify your Windows experience. I personally do not like to sync my personal stuff with this cloudy Windows thing, but there are disadvantages to my method. Cortana, for example, is a feature that allows you to search the web and your computer and is only available when synced with a Microsoft account. Windows 10 brings with it many vast improvements over Windows 8. One such example is the reincarnation of our old friend, the Start Menu. Yes, the loved and cherished and essential part of Windows since the 90s has returned, and it brings with it the last remaining traces of the Metro interface. Now, while the Start Menu can be expanded to be full screen, the applications that lie within it open as windows on your desktop. They do not open as full screen and irritating apps. And I'm very glad about this, but it does beg one question. Some of the applications on Windows 10 are these new tile metro -y interface type of things, but many of the other things like paint and calculator are just normal old icons. If you're going to change something, please change it consistently. One other very important feature in Windows 10 is a new way of searching and indexing your computer. It uses a blend of web search and window search to try to confuse you. If I type in Steam, for example, I get the application at the top and all sorts of web search gobbledygook as well. Then we see at the bottom a sad little button that allows us to search the actual computer, which is where I am, and find files and whatnot. This search can be handy if you want to actually search the web without opening a browser which seems a little pointless anyway because the links open in a browser, but it can be very irritating when trying to find a document, say, or a folder. By far and away, my favorite feature of Windows 10 is its addition of multiple desktops. This feature has been on my Mac for three years and I absolutely love it, and I am thrilled to see that it has made it onto the Windows platform. Now, it's as easy to switch between desktops on a PC now as it is on a Mac. Simply click on the multiple desktop button in the taskbar and select a pre-made desktop or create a new one. It's that simple. There's nothing really to, to discuss about it because it is as easy as that. The single most infuriating thing to me about Windows 10 is its weird and unnatural tendency to rotate the display without my telling it to. I'll turn on my computer to find that the landscape mode has been flipped, or it's in portrait mode, and it's very confusing to change this setting back. Uh, in Windows 7, you simply right-click on the desktop and click Screen Resolution, I believe. On Windows 10, there are no less than four steps to get there, and two advanced settings panes. It's needlessly complicated, and when your screen is flipped, it's hard to maneuver through all of these different windows and settings in order to find the one that you're looking for. Overall, I think Windows 10 is a vast improvement over Windows 8. It brings together the start menu from Windows 7, the modern and clean user interface from Windows 8, and spotlight search and multiple desktops from OS 10. And the best part, upgrade from Windows 7 and Windows 8 is free and so is a technical preview. So if you're interested, check the link in the description below and make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and whatever else you need to do to promote my channel and hear back from TechCheck.